Thank you for joining today on this study of the Gospel of John. Uh, tonight, Daniel Ricketts will be talking about it at 7 o'clock on the Maywood Facebook page. Uh, today's uh, Bible passage is a pretty tough one to understand. And so to kind of get us thinking uh, in the direction of the, the study, I want to begin with a story. In 1920, there was a millionaire and uh, his whole family was wealthy. His name was Roland Hazard. He was slated to take over the family business, except he was an alcoholic and they couldn't trust him. Because the family had so much wealth, Hazard was able to get the best medical care that the world had to offer. And so he traveled to Switzerland and he began meeting with the world famous psychiatrist Carl Jung. Uh, he met with Jung once a week for a year and the goal that Young had for him was to have a profound personality change so that he'd see the world differently and not have to drink. So at the end of a year, Young sent him home and he told him not to drink, obviously. And he also told him that if you do drink, you can lose everything, all those opportunities that you had before you. Even though Hazard had that mental thought in his mind and even though he'd spent a year learning from Young, by the time he got to Paris, somebody offered him a drink. He drank it, got drunk, and was in such a difficult state, he had to return back to Switzerland to Dr. Young. So he got there and he asked him for his help, and Young said, I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do for you. Hazard wasn't used to taking no for an answer, so he pressed him, and Young said again, no, I can't, I tried. I did everything that I know how to do, and it didn't work. And one more time, Hazard tried, he was desperate for help, and Young gave him this piece of hope. He said, I have heard of a few cases where people have found a spiritual way to have a profound change. If I were you, I would go and try that out. Well, Hazard did that. He went back to America, and he got connected with people in the Oxford Movement. The Oxford Movement was started by a Lutheran minister who was tired of some of the things that he saw in church life, and so he reduced church down to a small group meeting and they talked about spirituality. People couldn't dodge God as easily in a small group and they came face to face with some of their issues and many of them, including Hazard, got sober. Now the founder of the Oxford movement, this Lutheran pastor, had a daughter and she became the wife of Bill Wilson. Bill Wilson later became the founder of AA. Sandy Beach, in his book Steps and Stories, really tells Bill Wilson's story in a very interesting manner, and I highly recommend it. Now, the reason why I tell that is because there are a lot of people that I have met who have uh, come to Jesus by the same method as uh, Mr. Hazard. They, uh, they hit rock bottom. Everything that they tried didn't work. And they came to an end of themselves and they said, I am hopeless without help from God. And they met in a group and they worked through the steps and in the working through the steps, they met Jesus. So the Bible passage I'm going to talk about is a passage, I believe, where Jesus leads us to rock bottom so that at the next point he can then bring his healing power into our lives. So let's look at verses 36 through 40 of John chapter 12. After Jesus had said this, he departed and he hid from them. Although he had performed so many signs in their presence, they did not believe in him. This was to fulfill the word of the prophet Isaiah, is what Isaiah said. Lord, who has believed our message, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? And so they could not believe because Isaiah also said, He has blinded our eyes and hardened our heart so that they might not look with their eyes and understand with their heart and turn, and I would heal them. So that's, like I said, that's deep water. and We have to try to figure that out. What does it mean that God would blind our eyes and harden our heart so that we couldn't turn to be healed? Well, here's how I see it. If you put a knife in one hand, it's designed to kill somebody. You put a knife in the hand of a surgeon, it's designed to cure. What Jesus is doing in these verses is like the knife in the hand of a surgeon. It is tough medicine to have our eyes blinded, our heart hardened until we reach 
rock bottom. But when we reach rock bottom like Roland Hauser, a hazard, the Lord is able to apply his healing power to us. Now, I want to stop our, our study today of John's Gospel and I want to turn to you and appeal to you. Jesus said in Mark chapter 8, 36 and 37, What shall it profit a person if they gain the whole world and lose their own soul? Or what shall a person give in exchange for their soul? That's one of the questions we ought to really consider. Countries, I'll think worldwide with me please, may gain good economies, powerful armies, successful sports teams, vibrant entertainers, excellent technology, low rates of unemployment. They can have all of that. But if they lose their soul through blindness and hardness to the things of God, they've made a bad deal. People like many who read my blog, real-voices.com, or listen to these videos, have first-hand experience of reaching rock bottom, and they're in a perfect position to pray for a rock bottom humanity. You know the first step of being helpless, and you know the third step of surrender, and you know how to make amends to those whom you've hurt, and you know this far better than I do. So I want to ask you today to take your rock bottom experience and your recovery and to pray for the world. Put the feelings that you've had through your recovery process into prayers for a worldwide recovery and to return to God during this coronavirus pandemic. Our world needs a new way of looking at things, similar to what Roland Hazard needed. Ask God to have mercy on this world and to bring us to a spiritual recovery. I want to just say thank you for doing that, and let me lead us in prayer. Lord, I thank you for folks who are participating in this Real Voices uh, study. I thank you that they are uh, listening and engaging. And I ask now, Lord, for those who know the depths of being at rock bottom, that you would use their prayers to be highly effective for our world, that our world would return to you, and they would step by step come to a place of recovery. Please do that, we pray in Jesus' name. Well, thank you for a little bit of a different uh, Bible study today. I would really appreciate if you kind of give me some ideas about how you are praying so I can join you in prayer. And again, let's get together with Daniel tonight, and uh, let's hear what he has to say. God bless you.